and Academy, India's largest learning platform. Today we are going to continue that to respiratory system only. Before starting, a little bit of introduction. Myself, Dr. Nidhi, I am your physiology educator at an Academy. This is our Telegram page. Let's crack me, PG. Follow us out there so that you will get link of each and every classes out here. This is my page on Unacademy, unacademy.com slash at the rate KGMC. Follow me out there so that you will get notification of every class and you won't miss a single class. This is a code Dr. Nidhi. If you want to join any paid course, you can use this referral code to get additional 10% off. I have taken many plus classes, many special classes, so anytime you can join and revise the topic. Now, this is the test calendar. Do enroll yourself. We are going to have this All India mock test. Do remember. Now moving further, we are launching this previous year question bank. We are launching this MEVS professional course. This may have in-depth coverage over Sare concepts ki where mean clinical integrated session will be there, answer writing session will be there. Subject wise test over every Saturday, which we will discuss on Monday. Subject to write test at the end of completion of subject be yoga live interactive classes, okay, doubt clearing session, okay, recorded session, okay, and you can download the PDF also. So if you are in the MBBS professional one, you can join this course. We are starting this doubt clarification series. This may subject wise doubt clear on yes, plus platform. Ke liye. 6 April onward, we are going to start this doubt clarification series. So enroll yourself right now. Now coming to the subscription, we have two type of subscription, plus subscription as well as iconic subscription. First coming to this plus subscription, there you will get access of India's best platform or benefit you are able to access both live and recorded. So if you know if you have a session, so you can see the recorded version, you have an opportunity to learn from India's top educator. For the medical examination, we always conduct this live tests and live quizzes. From that, you can analyze your preparation at any point of time. You have a flexibility. You can study on the device of your choice. If you phone always have your phone access to you want to go for the bigger screen, you can go for the bigger screen. We have a question bank which consists of 25,000 plus questions. High yield question, hai, clinical based question and with explanation. Hai. So this is going to be very beneficial for all of you. Now coming to the iconic subscription where you get access of India's two best platform that is an academy and the prep ladder. So you are going to get all the plus benefit like I said live classes, recorded classes, question bank, live test and live quizzes. Along with that you get access for the prep ladder. In this you can access the clinical and integrated essential of prep ladder, video lecture from the dream team, question bank 3.0. Rapid revision and snapshot, and you will also be provided with the treasure and true notes. So, if you want to access the prep ladder, also go for the iconic subscription. Everybody, moving further, they are our FMG December 2021 top of special class feature. You all know our special class is also free of cost, but they are way more special. How they are special because they are always and always live, live classes, interactive sessions. आप अपने एजुकेटर से वन टू वन इंटरेक्ट कर सकते हो अपने डाउट को लाइव सेशन में क्लियर कर सकते हो पोल्स की फीचर होते हैं जैसे क्लास काफी एंगेजिंग होता है रेज द हैंड फीचर इज देयर नाउ यू कैन टॉक टू योर एजुकेटर इन लाइव क्लास अगर किसी एजुकेटर को फॉलो करते हो तो उनके क्लास से प्रायर नोटिफिकेशन मिल जाता है आफ्टर द लेक्चर यू कैन डाउनलोड द पीडीएफ एंड रिवाइज इट एनी टाइम एनीवेयर वी आर स्टार्टिंग दिस हाई एल थ्योरी रिवीजन बैच नीट पीजी 2022 के लिए स्टार्ट करने जा रहे हैं दिस हाई एल थियोरी रिवीजन बैच जो कि 30th मार्च से स्टार्ट होगा एंड दैट विल लास्ट टिल 15th में यानी टोटल 1.5 मंथ इसकी ड्यूरेशन रहेगी 140 आवर ऑफ रिवीजन क्लासेस होंगे रिकॉर्डेड क्लासेस होंगे टू ग्रैंड टेस्ट होंगे क्वेश्चंस बैंक यू विल गेट दिस लाइव इंटरैक्टिव सेशन विल बी देयर एंड आफ्टर द लेक्चर यू कैन डाउनलोड द पीडीएफ वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट दिस हाई एल रिवीजन इन एमसीक्यू बैच आल्सो फॉर एफएमजी 2022 और ये भी हमारा 30th मार्च से स्टार्ट हो रहा है एंड दैट विल लास्ट टिल 30th में यानी टोटल 2 मंथ इसकी ड्यूरेशन होगी दिस विल कंसिस्ट ऑफ ग्रैंड टेस्ट सब्जेक्ट टेस्ट रिकॉर्डेड क्लासेस क्वेश्चन बैंक लाइव इंटरैक्टिव क्लासेस एंड द पीडीएफ सो नाउ कमिंग टू द फी स्ट्रक्चर दीस आर द फी स्ट्रक्चर फॉर द प्लस सब्सक्रिप्शन दिस इज द फी स्ट्रक्चर फॉर द आइकॉनिक सब्सक्रिप्शन एंड दिस इज द 
फी स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ लाइक सब्सक्रिप्शन लाइक सब्सक्रिप्शन हमारा न्यूली एडेड वन है जहाँ पे यू कैन एक्सेस ऑल द टेस्ट इसकी फीस बहुत ही इकोनॉमिकल है टू मंथ की फीस इज टू थाउजेंड वन हंड्रेड सिक्सटी थ्री मंथ फीस टू थाउजेंड सेवन हंड्रेड ओनली सिक्स मंथ फी इज फोर थाउजेंड एट हंड्रेड सिक्सटी नाइन मंथ फी इज फाइव थाउजेंड फोर हंड्रेड एंड वन ईयर फी इज तो बहुत ही इकोनॉमिकल प्राइस है या प्लस सब्सक्रिप्शन की बात कर लें या आइकॉनिक सब्सक्रिप्शन की बात कर लें या लाइक सब्सक्रिप्शन की बात कर लें तो अपने रिक्वायरमेंट के हिसाब से यू कैन चेक द सब्सक्रिप्शन एंड स्टार्ट योर प्रेपरेशन नाउ कमिंग टू द टॉपिक टुडे वी आर टू रिवाइज दिस एक्सपेरेटरी सिस्टम रेस्पेरेटरी सिस्टम में फर्स्ट वी आर टू स्टडी अबाउट दिस मैकेनिज्म ऑफ ब्रीदिंग टू अंडरस्टैंड द मैकेनिज्म ऑफ ब्रीदिंग डू रिमेम्बर द वॉल स्लो वॉट इज वॉल स्लो स्टेट प्रेशर इज इनवर्सली प्रपोर्शनल टू द वॉल्यूम when volume in the lung is going to increase so pressure of the lung is going to decrease so in physiology or in our respiratory physiology the volume we are talking is tidal volume the pressure which we are talking about are three lung pressure that is intrapleural pressure alveolar pressure and the transpulmonary pressure theek hai three pressures intrapleural pressures alveolar pressure transpulmonary pressure first coming to this intrapleural pressure as the name suggests it is between the two layers of the pleura so at resting condition the intrapleural pressure is negative and it is 2.5 minus 2.5 mm of hg so do remember this one so what happened it to become positive only and only during forceful expiration rest normal respiration ki baat karenge which is always and always negative now coming to the point why it is negative our pleural pleural membrane is attached to lung from one side and it is attached to chest wall at the other side chest wall has tendency to move outside while lung has tendency to collapse so kya hoga pleura is stretched by these two opposing forces and these two opposing forces ki wajah se kya hoga a vacuum like state is created between these two pleural layer and that is responsible for this intrapleural pressure negative so now coming to during inspiration kya hoga volume of the lung is going to increase so pressure is going to decrease because boyle's law states that pressure is inversely proportional to the volume हमारे रेस्टिंग कंडीशन में प्रेशर कितना है इट इज माइनस टू पॉइंट फाइव एम एम एफ एच जी अब प्रेशर और फॉल करेगा इट रीच एस टू माइनस सिक्स एम एम ऑफ एच जी मीन्स इट बिकम मोर नेगेटिव नाउ कमिंग टू द सिचुएशन ड्यूरिंग एक्सपीरेशन क्या होगा वॉल्यूम ऑफ लंग इज गोइंग टू डिक्रीज सो प्रेशर इज गोइंग टू इंक्रीज सो माइनस सिक्स से इंक्रीज होके इट रीच एस टू माइनस टू पॉइंट फाइव एम एम ऑफ एच जी दैट्स हाउ अवर इंट्राप्लूरल प्रेशर चेंजेस ड्यूरिंग ब्रीदिंग is this clear everybody do reply fast is this clear so moving further is the alveolar pressure second pressure is alveolar pressure at resting condition this alveolar pressure is zero during inspiration kya hoga during inspiration volume of lung is going to increase so the alveolar pressure is going to decrease so from zero it decreases to minus 1 mm of hg so at the end of inspiration kya ho jayega at the end of inspiration alveolar pressure hamara zero ho jayega and it from minus 1 it reaches to zero is this clear now coming to the expiration expiration mein kya hoga volume of lung is going to decrease so pressure increases so from zero it increases to plus 1 mm of hg and same at the end of expiration alveolar pressure again becomes zero ठीक है तो किस तरह चेंज हुआ रेस्टिंग कंडीशन पे इट इज जीरो इंस्पिरेशन के टाइम इट बिकम मोर नेगेटिव इट बिकम माइनस वन एम एम ऑफ एच जी एट द एंड ऑफ इंस्पिरेशन इट अगेन बिकम जीरो फिर हमारा एक्सपिरेशन स्टार्ट करेंगे तो एट द एक्सपिरेशन क्या होगा इट बिकम पॉजिटिव इट इंक्रीजेस एंड इट बिकम प्लस वन एम एम ऑफ एच जी एंड एट द एंड ऑफ एक्सपिरेशन इट अगेन बिकम जीरो दैट्स हाउ आवर एलवेलो प्रेशर चेंजेस ड्यूरिंग ब्रीदिंग is this clear moving further to this diagram 
हमारा दिस इज द फर्स्ट कर्व विच इज सोइंग इंट्रा एलवेलर प्रेशर सेकेंड इज द ब्रीथ वॉल्यूम ड्यूरिंग इंस्पिरेशन वॉल्यूम इंक्रीजेज ड्यूरिंग इंस्पिरेशन वॉल्यूम डिक्रीजेज ठीक है अब बात करेंगे प्रेशर की तो ड्यूरिंग इंस्पिरेशन क्या होगा वॉल्यूम इंक्रीजेस सो प्रेशर इज गोइंग टू डिक्रीज सो फ्रॉम जीरो विच इज एट द नॉर्मल कंडीशन फ्रॉम जीरो इट डिक्रीजेस टू माइनस वन एम एम ऑफ एच जी ठीक है एंड एट द एंड ऑफ इंस्पिरेशन इट अगेन बिकम जीरो एक्सपिरेशन में क्या हुआ वॉल्यूम इज डिक्रीजिंग सो प्रेशर इज गोइंग टू इंक्रीज सो इट इंक्रीजेस टू प्लस सो वन एम एम ऑफ एच जी एंड एट द एंड ऑफ एक्सपिरेशन इट अगेन बिकम जीरो That's how our alveolar pressure changes during breathing. Is this clear with everyone? Moving further to the next pressure, that is transpulmonary pressure. This transpulmonary pressure is the right one. It is equal to alveolar pressure minus pleural pressure. And this transpulmonary pressure is responsible for the opening of lung during the inspiration. So at rest, हम कह सकते हैं alveolar pressure कितना होता है zero. Pleural pressure कितना होता है minus 2.5 mm of G. So at the resting condition, this alveolar pressure is plus 2.5 mm of G. And this clear with the property. Now moving to the next one, that is pressure volume changes during breathing. During inspiration, क्या हुआ? सबको समराइज कर रहे हैं बिल्कुल ध्यान से देखना ड्यूरिंग इंस्पिरेशन वॉल्यूम ऑफ द लंग इज गोइंग टू इंक्रीज सो बोथ द प्रेशर इज गोइंग टू डिक्रीज इंट्रा प्लूरल प्रेशर एज वेल एज एलवेलर प्रेशर तो इंट्रा प्लूरल प्रेशर फ्रॉम माइनस टू पॉइंट फाइव इट रीचेस टू माइनस सिक्स एम एम ऑफ एच जी इन एलवेलर प्रेशर की बात करेंगे तो फ्रॉम जीरो इट डिक्रीजेस टू माइनस वन एम एम ऑफ एच जी ड्यूरिंग एक्सपिरेशन ना ड्यूरिंग एक्सपिरेशन क्या होगा वॉल्यूम इन द लंग इज गोइंग टू डिक्रीज so since volume is decreased pressure is going to increase so both intrapleural as well as alveolar pressure is going to increase so intrapleural pressure minus 6 se hamara pahunch jata hai minus 2.5 mm of hg alveolar pressure from minus 1 se ye again zero aa jata hai at the end of inspiration theek hai aur from zero it reaches to plus 1 mm of hg is this clear with everybody सो ड्यूरिंग रेस्टिंग कंडीशन अगर हम इंट्राप्लियर प्रेशर राइट करते हैं तो रेस्टिंग कंडीशन पे इट इज माइनस सिक्स माइनस टू पॉइंट फाइव एम एम ऑफ एच जी आफ्टर इंस्पिरेशन इट रीचेज टू माइनस सिक्स एम एम ऑफ एच जी ठीक है आफ्टर एक्सपिरेशन इट अगेन बिकम माइनस टू पॉइंट फाइव एम एम ऑफ एच जी एलवेलर प्रेशर फिर से हम राइट कर लेते हैं रेस्टिंग कंडीशन में इट इज जीरो इंस्पिरेशन के बाद इट बिकम नेगेटिव इट बिकम माइनस वन एम एम ऑफ एच जी एट द एंड ऑफ इंस्पिरेशन इट अगेन बिकम जीरो एक्सपिरेशन में इट इज गोइंग टू इंक्रीज सो इट इंक्रीज इज टू प्लस वन एम एम ऑफ एच जी एट द एंड ऑफ इंस्पिरेशन इट अगेन बिकम जीरो सो दैट्स हाउ आवर एलवेलर प्रेशर चेंजेस इज दिस क्लियर विद एवरीबडी डू रिप्लाई फास्ट इज दिस क्लियर Moving further to this diagram, what happens? Inspiration में हमारा volume is increasing and expiration में volume is decreasing. So first is the alveolar pressure. Alveolar pressure हमारा zero से minus one होगा, then again becomes zero, then plus one, then zero. Now coming to the intrapleural pressure, which is at the resting condition minus two point five mm of Hg. From there it reaches to minus six mm of Hg. And at the end of expiration, it again reaches to minus 2.5 mm. Moving further to the muscles required for the breathing. Normal breathing. की बात करेंगे तो हमारा inspiration is active process, while expiration is passive process. So now coming to the muscle that is required for inspiration. The most important out of all is diaphragm. Along with that, we have some certain accessory muscle like sternocleidomastoid. Clanny muscle and external intercostal muscle. All these three muscles are required for inspiration. Diaphragm, the most important accessory muscles are sternocleidomastoid, clanny muscle, and external intercostal muscle. Now moving to the diagram. This is the diagram. Our jo 
the expiration at the normal situation is passive. It occurs by the recoil of lung and the ribcage to remember this point. Active होता है हमारा inspiration ना तो उसमें हमारा required होता है sternocleidomastoid, sclerny muscle, external intercostal as well as diaphragm the most important one. ठीक है but certain expiration is हमारा active जैसे like forceful expiration during exercise are active expiration. And in that situation, the muscle involved are internal intercostal, rectus abdominis, obliquus, and transverse abdominis. These are the muscles that is required during active expiration. Same thing is written out here. During expiration, the ex muscle required are internal intercostal, rectus abdominis, and transverse abdominis. Now coming to the next topic, that is compliance. Just for coffee, sorry questions are there. What is compliance? First of all, what is compliance? The stretching or distension ability of our lung alveoli is known as compliance. Okay? Second point, what are the opposing forces for this compliance? Surface tension. The surface tension is exerted by the water molecule which is lining our alveoli. Okay? Next is the elastic recoil of our alveoli. It is also going to oppose this compliance. So we can say this one, complies is inversely proportional to the elasticity of alveoli and it is inversely proportional to the surface tension which is exerted by the water molecule. So now coming to the emphysema. In emphysema what happened? Lung elasticity decreases. So when lung elasticity is going to decrease, compliance is going to increase. So, lung elasticity decreases, compliance increases and we all know compliance is the stretching of alveoli. So, out here there will be more stretching of alveoli and that is going to cause this over distinction of lung. And in x-ray we are going to see this hyperinflation areas. Is this clear? Moving further in restrictive lung disorder like pulmonary fibrosis, compliance decreases. Okay. This is the normal compliance of lung that is 200 ml per centimeter of water. And we can say compliance is for given change in a pressure, the volume change in our alveoli is the compliance. So do remember obstructive lung disorder may compliance increases and in restrictive lung disorder our compliance decreases. Normal compliance with 200 ml per centimeter of water compliance care for given change in a pressure, the volume change in alveoli is compliance. Moving further to this diagram, this is the normal compliance com because this is a curve between change in a pressure for change in a volume. Okay? For given change in a pressure, the volume changes on compliance. Okay? So, this is a curve of compliance and this is the normal compliance and in first curve, this red one, we what we all are seeing, in this red compliance for given change in a pressure, For given change in a pressure, the volume changes more. So, this is the curve of high compliance. And high compliance kis case mein hota hai? Emphysema. And for this blue one, what we all are seeing? For given change in a pressure, the volume changes low. So, kaisa curve ho gaya? Ye humara low compliance curve ho gaya. And low compliance curve kis case mein hota hai? Pulmonary fibrosis. Is this clear everybody? Moving further. Same thing is written out here. In restrictive lung disorder, lung will not descend on increasing pressure. So compliance kaisa hoga? Poor so curve will calm down. Moving further. Different type of compliances are there. First is static compliance. This is the compliance during the breath holding situation and it is 200 ml per centimeter of water. Next is the dynamic compliance. As the name suggests, it will change with the stage of breathing. So what happened at the start of inspiration, our alveoli are smaller. So in small area, we will surfactant distribute. Hoga. So higher concentration of surfactant will be there. So surface tension reduced, out here is more. So overall surface tension kya hoga yaan pe low. And we all know compliance is inversely proportional to the surface tension. 
so surface tension is low so compliance at the start of inspiration is more is this clear with everybody ab baat karenge at the end of inspiration kya ho gaya hamari alveoli become large so larger area mein surfactant distribute hoga so concentration of surfactant reduces so surface tension reduced out here is also less so overall surface tension yahan pe kya ho jayega that is more so compliance is less so what we all are seeing at the start of inspiration compliance is more at the end of inspiration compliance is less so what we all are seeing compliance is changing so it is a dynamic compliance next is the specific compliance it is the derived one normal compliance upon frc is our specific compliance is this clear with everybody moving further to the compliance curve during inspiration and expiration this is the compliance curve during inspiration this is the compliance curve during expiration so what we all are seeing that compliance change during inspiration is not coinciding with the compliance change during expiration and that is going to cause this gap between these two curve and this is known as hysteresis so we can say hysteresis is indicating that compliance change during expiration is not coinciding with the compliance change during expiration ab ye kyun hua see at the start of inspiration our alveoli are small compliance is more at the end of inspiration our alveoli are larger so compliance is less at the end of expiration hamara at the start of expiration alveoli are large compliance is less at the end of expiration is alveoli is small and compliance is more so compliance change during inspiration is not coinciding with the compliance change during expiration and that is the cause of this hysteresis so we can say this stasis is due to firstly we can say it is due to difference in compliance and this difference in compliance is due to surfactant concentration so we can say this stasis is also due to this surfactant is this clear and the surfactant is responsible for hair stasis do remember moving further stiff portion of a curve yeah what does it indicate it indicate that for a small pressure changes volume changes more and that is indicating the good compliance so a steep portion of compliance curve is indicating the good compliance while flat flat portion can indicate karta hai flat portion indicate that for given change in a pressure volume changes less or there is no volume change and that is indicating the poor compliance so do remember steep portion indicate good compliance flat portion indicate poor compliance moving further highest compliance kab hota hai at the end of expiration lowest compliance kab hota hai at the end of inspiration so we can say how stasis is due to the surface tension and this surface tension is due to water molecule so when we wash our lung with the saline surface tension will, will be removed and so there would be no hysteresis so this point is important from the exam point of view in saline washed lung there is no surface tension and there is no hysteresis is this clear with everyone do you reply fast is this clear abhi tak session mein kisi ko koi doubt hai to clear kar sakte hain anybody any query till now you can ask in the session only Further. So, moving further. 
this is the diaphragm this is eophyl lung where we are seeing this hysteresis is there and this is the line fill lung where there is no hysteresis moving forward this is the compliance curve with three compliance compliance of chest wall compliance of lung and total compliance this is the curve for compliance of chest wall this is the curve for compliance of lung and this is the compliance for wood respiratory system so in this we, we are seeing this is the point where the compliance of chest wall and lung is balanced out and this point is corresponding to our fr2 so moving further there are two forces that opposes our thorax first is chest wall second one is lung chest wall has tendency to move out lung has tendency to collapse and that is a point wahan jahan pe ye balance out ho jata hai that is known as balancing point or equilibrium point and this balancing point or equilibrium point corresponds to our fr is this clear moving further to the walk of breathing ठीक है वर्क कब होता है जब हमारा एयर लंग इनहेल करता है या एक्सहेल करता है दैट इज द वर्क डन नॉर्मल वर्क डन कितना होता है हमारा लंग का दैट इज पॉइंट फाइव किलोग्राम पर मीटर पर मिनट दिस इज द फॉर्मूला वर्क इज इक्वल टू फोर्स डिस्प्लेसमेंट फिजिक्स में सभी ने पढ़ा होगा आउट ईयर द फोर्स इज आर चेंज इन प्रेशर डिस्प्लेसमेंट इज चेंज इन वॉल्यूम अब वर्क को क्लासीफाई करेंगे work is classified into two categories 65% is the major work done and 35% is the minor work done kaise hota hai distribute major work done kya hua minor kya hua major work done is 65% na 65% is the major one and that is to overcome this elastic forces theek hai one third hamara jo work done hai surface tension ko ओवरकम करने में जाता है एंड वन थर्ड इज गोइंग टू ओवरकम दिस टिश्यू इलास्टिसिटी एंड हमारा जो रेस्ट थर्टी फाइव परसेंट माइनर वर्क डन है दिस माइनर वर्क डन इज टू ओवरकम दिस रेजिस्टेंस जिसमें ट्वेंटी एट परसेंट क्या है एवे रेजिस्टेंस है एंड सेवन परसेंट इज टिश्यू रेजिस्टेंस एंड इन सीओपीडी हमारा एवे रेजिस्टेंस इंक्रीज हो जाता है और अगर इंटरस्टिशियल लंग डिजीज की बात करें तो इंटरस्टिशियल लंग डिजीज में टिश्यू रेजिस्टेंस इंक्रीजेस सो दिस इज द क्लिनिकल एस्पेक्ट डू रिमेम्बर इन सीओपीडी एवे रेजिस्टेंस इंक्रीज होता है एंड इन इंटरस्टिशियल लंग डिजॉर्डर टिश्यू रेजिस्टेंस इंक्रीजेस इज दिस क्लियर विथ एवरीवन मूविंग फर्दर to the lung volume and the lung capacity this lung volume and lung capacity is measured by a spirometer and that is spirometer is known as hutchinson spirometer so we have two type of lung volume static lung volume and the dynamic lung volume static lung volume mein kya hoga time factor is not there डायनामिक लंग वॉल्यूम में क्या है इट इज टाइम डिपेंडेंट इसमें हमारा आ जाएगा एफ पी वी वन फोर्स एक्सपायट्री वॉल्यूम इन वन सेकेंड फोर्स एक्सपायट्री वॉल्यूम इन टू सेकेंड फोर्स एक्सपायट्री वॉल्यूम इन थ्री सेकेंड दिस डायनामिक लंग वॉल्यूम इज इम्पॉर्टेंट फ्रॉम द एग्जाम पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू बिकॉज इट इज इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर द डायग्नोसिस ऑफ रेस्पायट्री डिजॉर्डर सो इसी से हम क्लासीफाई कर दें कि किस टाइप का रेस्पायट्री डिजॉर्डर है ठीक है अब इसी को डिटेल में देखेंगे फर्स्ट कमिंग टू द स्टैटिक लंग वॉल्यूम इसमें फर्स्ट वन इज आर टाइडल वॉल्यूम सो इन स्टैटिक लंग वॉल्यूम एंड कैपेसिटी वी हैव द फर्स्ट वन दैट इज टाइडल वॉल्यूम व्हाट इज टाइडल वॉल्यूम द अमाउंट ऑफ एयर दैट वी इनहेल एंड एक्सहेल ड्यूरिंग नॉर्मल ब्रीदिंग इज आर टाइडल वॉल्यूम एंड इसकी वैल्यू कितनी होती है इट्स नॉर्मल वैल्यू इज 500 एमएल नेक्स्ट इज इंस्पिरेटरी रिजर्व वॉल्यूम the amount of air that can be maximally breathed in beyond a normal respiration 
नॉर्मल इंस्पिरेशन के बाद जो मैक्सिमली हम ब्रीद इन कर सकते हैं दैट इज इंस्पायरटरी रिजर्व कैपेसिटी एंड इट्स नॉर्मल वैल्यू इज टू टू थ्री लीट वर्क नेक्स्ट इज एक्सपायरटरी रिजर्व वॉल्यूम आफ्टर नॉर्मल एक्सपिरेशन द अमाउंट ऑफ एयर विच कैन वी कैन फोर्सफुली ब्रीद आउट दिस आर एक्सपायरटरी रिजर्व वॉल्यूम एंड इट्स नॉर्मल वैल्यू इज थर्टीन हंड्रेड एम एल next is the residual volume the amount of air that remain in lung after forceful expiration is our residual volume and its normal value is 1200 ml next is the closing volume newly added one hai kya hota hai at the end of expiration jo basal region of lung mein alveoli hote they, they start to close and when it close it entrap some volume of air and that is known as this closing volume and this closing volume increases with the age moving further to this diagram this is the tidal volume the amount of air that we can breathe in or breathe out normally inspiratory reserve volume the amount of air that we can inspire beyond the normal inspiration expiratory reserve volume is amount of air that we can exhale out after normal expiration what is residual volume the amount of air that remain in lung after forceful expiration is our residual volume so these are the volume now coming to the static capacities first is the inspiratory capacity inspiratory capacity kya hua hamara tidal volume plus inspiratory reserve volume is our inspiratory capacity next is the frc functional residual capacity ठीक है एफ आर सी इज इक्वल टू एक्सपायर टू रिजर्व वॉल्यूम प्लस रेजिडियल वॉल्यूम एंड इट्स वैल्यू इज टू पॉइंट फाइव लीटर ठीक है डू रिमेम्बर एफ आर सी इज टू पॉइंट फाइव लीटर एफ आर सी क्या हो गया हमारा वॉल्यूम ऑफ एयर दैट रिमेन इन लंग आफ्टर द एंड ऑफ नॉर्मल एक्सपिरेशन नॉर्मल एक्सपिरेशन के बाद हमारा वॉल्यूम कौन कौन सा बच जाता है लंग में एफ आर सी प्लस sorry e expiratory reserve volume plus residual volume that is our functional residual capacity next is the vital capacity vital capacity kya hota hai the volume of air that we can maximally exhale out after maximal inspiration so maximal inspiration ke baad hum yahan pahunch gaye maximal inspiration ke baad hum jo maximally exhale out kar sakte hain that is inspiratory reserve volume plus tidal volume plus expiratory reserve volume so this is our vital capacity is this clear so vital capacity is a summation of expiratory reserve volume tidal volume and expiratory reserve volume so its normal value is 3.8 to 4.5 liter next is the total lung capacity this total lung capacity is summation of tidal volume plus inspiratory reserve volume plus expiratory reserve volume plus residual volume so we can say it is the summation of vital capacity plus residual volume and its normal value is 5 to 6 liter frc kitna tha frc was normal frc is 2.5 liter and total lung capacity is 5 liter so we can say this frc is equal to 50% of total lung capacity and abhi humne padha tha frc is also known as equilibrium point and the mid point is this clear with everybody now coming to the next important point there are some volume there are some capacity which cannot be measured by this hutchinson spirometry kaun sa volume hum measure nahi kar sakte we cannot measure this residual volume so when we cannot measure this residual volume we cannot measure this frc because frc is summation of expiratory reserve volume plus residual volume and we cannot measure this total lung capacity because total lung capacity also consists of this residual volume so this point is important from hutchinson spirometer we cannot measure the residual volume we cannot measure the expiratory reserve frc we cannot measure the total lung capacity is this clear with everybody samajh mein aaya static lungs and static lung volume and capacity is everybody is this clear
किसी को भी कोई डाउट है तो क्लियर कर सकते हैं एनी बडी एनी क्वेरी सो डू रिमेम्बर एफ आर सी क्या होता है फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ टोटल लंग कैपेसिटी इज आर एफ आर सी सो मूविंग फॉर द Now, how this FRC is अगर स्पायरोमेट्री से हम मेजर नहीं कर सकते तो देर आर सम अटेनेट मेथड जिससे हम एफ आर सी मेजर करते होंगे सो देर आर सम मेथड विच फ्रॉम विच वी मेजर दिस एफ आर सी फर्स्ट मेथड इज हीलियम डाइल्यूशन मेथड ठीक है हीलियम डाइल्यूशन मेथड में क्या होता है पेशेंट इज कनेक्टेड टू अ चैम्बर जिसमें हम क्लो नोन कंसेंट्रेशन एंड नोन वॉल्यूम ऑफ हीलियम को एड करते हैं एंड इट इज कनेक्टेड टू पेशेंट माउथ so after certain period of time kya hoga if this helium is going to diffuse into the lung and after certain period of time our diffusion is stop ho jayega because equilibration achieve ho jayega so after equilibrium concentration hamara remain same before and after so initial initial hamara amount of helium is equal to initial concentration of helium into initial volume of helium final cons uh, mass of helium is final concentration c2 and final volume that is v1 plus frc so this is the formula this se hum frc calculate karte hain via this helium dilution method theek hai is this clear so mass conservation laga ke humne helium dilution method se frc ko calculate kar liya next technique that is nitrogen washout method isme hum nitrogen use karte hain and this is the formula C1 V1 upon C2 is going to give this FRC. इसमें क्या करते हैं? Patient is asked to breathe in pure oxygen and he has to ask in asked to expire in nitrogen meter. अब nitrogen meter से क्या होगा? Expired air में nitrogen content आ जाता है. And this formula से we calculate the FRC. C1 V1 upon C2 go give us this FRC. Coming to the next one, that is the most commonly used method to measure the FRC is body plethysmography. This means that the subject is enclosed in a box and he is asked to breathe in and breathe out in that closed box only. So what happened when he when he breathe in in a closed box, volume of a box is going to decrease. So we all know by the Boyle's law pressure is inversely proportional to the volume. So volume of box decrease हो रहा है तो pressure of box क्या हो जाएगा increase. और lung के level पे बात करते हैं तो inspiration की वजह से lung में volume increase होगा. So pressure of lung is going to decrease. So this is the formula जिससे हम we calculate this FRC. Pressure हम किस level पे measure करते हैं? We measure the pressure at the level of mouth. So do remember. Volume is measured at the level of lung, while pressure is measured at the level of mouth. ठीक है? Volume at the level of lung, pressure at the level of mouth is calculated. So inspiration के बाद क्या होगा? हमारा volume of lung increase होगा, while pressure of lung is going to decrease. So this is the formula. यहाँ पे भी हम mass conservation लगाएंगे. Pressure of mouth initial into volume of lung initial is equal to pressure of mouth final into volume of lung final. So volume of lung final को हम लिख सकते हैं volume of lung initial plus change in volume. This is our final volume. So in this we can see this diagram. A patient is enclosed in a closed chamber and is asked to breathe in and breathe out. And during inspiration, क्या हो जाएगा? During inspiration, pressure, volume of lung is going to increase, so pressure of lung is going to decrease. Box के बारे में बात करेंगे, तो volume of box is going to decrease, so pressure of box is going to increase. Pressure is measured at the level of mouth, volume is measured at the level of lung. So this is the formula. Pressure of mouth initial into volume of lung initial is equal to pressure of mouth final plus volume of lung final. That is volume of lung initial plus change in volume. And this volume of lung initial is our FRC. So body plethysmograph is a 
हम एफर्ट सिलेंडर क्यों करते हैं सो कॉम्पोनेंट्स की टेक्निक हो गए फर्स्ट इज हीलियम डाइल्यूशन सेकंड इज नाइट्रोजन वॉश आउट एंड नेक्स्ट वन इज बॉडी प्लेटिसमोग्राफी ऑल दीस थ्री मेथड आर यूज्ड टू मेजर द एफआर सी इज दिस क्लियर विद एवरीबॉडी प्रोसीड करते हैं फर्दर नाउ कमिंग टू आफ्टर स्टैटिक लंग वॉल्यूम एंड capacity now coming to the dynamic lung volume and capacity this dynamic lung volume is is responsible for diagnosis of respiratory disorders so this is exam important from the exam point of view so now coming to the most important point how this force vital capacity or force vital capacity ko measure karte in this patient is asked to have a deep inspiration and now he has to start the expiration but expiration should be first point it should be fast it should be forceful and it should last for 6 seconds kaisa hona chahiye expiration expiration should be fast forceful forceful and it should last for 6 seconds this is all three three point are important for measuring this force vital capacity theek hai to usme we have certain type of force vital capacity that is force expiratory volume in 1 second force expiratory volume in 2 second and force expiratory volume in force 3 second no now coming to the first one the force expiratory volume in first second is equal to 70 to 80% of our force vital capacity yani hamara force vital capacity ka almost 80% expired ho jata hai during first second only theek hai and this ratio is known as stefani index kaun sa ratio fpv1 upon force vital capacity ratio is r 70 to 80 percent and this is known as stefani index theek hai obstructive lung disorder ki agar baat karenge to obstructive lung disorder mein the stefani index decreases while in restrictive lung disorder this either remain normal or increases this stefani index decreases in obstructive lung disorder this stefani index increases in restrictive lung disorder do remember force vital capacity in first 2 second is 95% force vital capacity in first 3 second is almost 99 to 100% is this clear with everybody moving further to the flow volume loop so this is a loop not a plotted graph do not confuse with the graph this is not a graph this is only an only loop and this is important because the same different type of lung disorder ko differentiate karte hain kaise differentiate karte hain let me draw this one for all of you okay fine we have this page on y axis we take the flow rate on y axis हमने फ्लो ले लिया एंड ऑन एक्स एक्सिस वी टेक द वॉल्यूम सो नाउ फर्स्ट वी आर ड्राइंग अबाउट ड्राइंग आर इंस्पिरेटरी सो दिस इज द पॉइंट ठीक है जहां से हम डीप इंस्पिरेशन स्टार्ट कर रहे हैं तो डीप इंस्पिरेशन से पहले हमारा वॉल्यूम ऑफ एयर इन आर लंग इज आर एफ आर सी So this point corresponds to our FRC. Now we are starting with this deep inspiration. So this is the inspiratory loop. ठीक है ये loop है graph नहीं है because graph में हम y x अगर x axis पे इस तरह move करेंगे तो volume decreases but यहाँ पे क्या हो रहा है volume is increasing not decreasing. So do not take it as a loop. So sorry don't take it as a graph. It is a loop. So this point. let me change the color first this is the p inspiratory flow rate y axis pe humne flow liya na so this is the p inspiratory flow rate and this is 3 liter per second and this is achieved after 50% of inspiration this is inspiratory loop so peak inspiratory flow rate is achieved after 50% of inspiration and it is 3 liter per second now coming to the next that is our expiratory loop 
so this is the point trans india is starting the expiration this is the this is the curve for expiration this is the peak inspiratory expiratory flow rate peak expiratory flow rate and its normal value is 10 to 12 liter per second and it is achieved after 20% of expiration so all these data are important do remember peak inspiratory flow rate is achieved at 50% of inspiration is achieved or jab हमारा एक्सपिरेशन ट्वेंटी परसेंट हो जाता है तो पीक एक्सपायरेटरी फ्लो रेट इज अचीव एंड दैट इज टेन टू ट्वेल्व लीटर पर सेकेंड दिस इज अ फोर्ट डिपेंडेंट पार्ट दिस पार्ट इज अ फोर्ट इंडिपेंडेंट पार्ट ठीक है तो सारे डेटा याद रखना है पीक इंस्पायरेटरी फ्लो रेट इज थ्री लीटर पर सेकेंड पीक एक्सपायरेटरी फ्लो रेट इज टेन टू ट्वेल्व लीटर पर सेकेंड पीक इंस्पायरेटरी फ्लो रेट इज अचीव वेन फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ लंग वॉल्यूम इज इंस्पायर्ड पीक एक्सपायरेटरी फ्लो रेट इज अचीव एट ट्वेंटी परसेंट ऑफ लंग वॉल्यूम एक्सपायर्ड इसमें दो पार्ट हो गया एफर्ट डिपेंडेंट पार्ट एफर्ट इंडिपेंडेंट पार्ट फर्स्ट ट्वेंटी परसेंट इज एफर्ट डिपेंडेंट लास्ट एटी परसेंट इज एफर्ट इंडिपेंडेंट एफर्ट डिपेंडेंट में क्या होगा जितना ज्यादा एफर्ट लगाएंगे फ्लो रेट इंक्रीज हो सकता है सो दैट्स वाई इट इज नोन एज एफर्ट डिपेंडेंट पार्ट ठीक है दिस पॉइंट करस्पॉन्स टू आवर एफ दिस पॉइंट करस्पॉन्स टू आर एंड इसमें नेक्स्ट पॉइंट इज एफर्ट इंडिपेंडेंट पार्ट इज अफेक्टेड एंड यहाँ पे क्या मिलेगा we get this scooped out pack scooped out appearance or dog leg appearance this is the scooped out or dog leg pack this is so loop of my left shift ho gaya so what happened the total lung capacity this point corresponds to total lung this total lung capacity into this point corresponds to residual volume so residual volume increases total lung capacity increases and we already discussed this stefani index in decreases in this copd so kya hoga copd mein kya hoga hamara compliance increase hoga effort independent part affect hoga loop shifted to our left hoga dog leg pattern hoga total lung capacity increases residual volume increases and the tifani index decreases is this clear with everybody moving to the next situation that is in restrictive lung disorder restrictive lung disorder mein kya hoga curve is normal in shape but the size is a miniature version and the loop shifted toward the right and jaise right shift hoga to hamara total lung capacity decrease hoga residual volume decreases and our tifani index force vital capacity force expiratory volume in one second upon force vital capacity this ratio either increases or remain normal so this is the difference बिल्कुल याद रखिएगा ड्यूरिंग रिस्ट्रिक्टिव लंग डिजॉर्डर कॉम्प्लायंस इज गोइंग टू डिक्रीज फ्लो वॉल्यूम इज गोइंग टू फ्लो वॉल्यूम लूप इज गोइंग टू शिफ्ट टूवर्ड्स राइट एंड राइट शिफ्ट की वजह से क्या होगा टोटल लंग कैपेसिटी डिक्रीजेस रेजिडुअल वॉल्यूम डिक्रीजेस एंड द चिपानी इंडेक्स एंड इंक्रीजेस और रिमेन नॉर्मल so all these points are important as this clear with everybody so now coming to the next key hum is loop se obstruction bhi differentiate kar sakte hain ki either it is a variable obstruction or fixed obstruction variable obstruction can be either extra thoracic ya intra thoracic इसको भी डिफ्रेंशिएट कर सकते हैं कैसे डिफ्रेंशिएट कर सकते हैं फर्स्ट सिचुएशन वेरिएबल प्लस एक्स्ट्रा थोरासिक ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन है 
एक्स्ट्रा थोड़ा सा एक ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन जब भी होगा तो हमारा इंस्पायरेटरी फेज विल बी अफेक्टेड दिस इंस्पायरेटरी लूप विल बी अफेक्टेड ठीक है एंड दिस इज इंक्लूडिंग आर ऑब्स्ट्रक्टिव स्लीप एपनिया एंड द पैरालाइज वोकल कॉर्ड इन दोनों ही सिचुएशन में क्या होगा इंस्पायरेटरी लूप अफेक्ट होगा एंड दिस इज द सिचुएशन कमिंग टू द नेक्स्ट वन वेरिएबल इंट्राथोरासिक ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन है इंट्राथोरासिक ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन में एक्सपायरेटरी लूप इफेक्ट होगा एंड फॉर एग्जाम्पल ट्रैकियल ट्यूमर दिस ट्रैकियल ट्यूमर इज इंट्राथोरासिक वेरिएबल ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन लास्ट ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन दैट इज फिक्स ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन फिक्स ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन जब भी होगा तो हमारा बोथ इंस्पिरेशन एंड एक्सपिरेशन विल बी अफेक्टेड एंड दिस इज सीन ड्यूरिंग द फॉरन बॉडी ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन और दिस कैरिंग ऑफ एयर तो इस तरह से हम फ्लो वॉल्यूम लूप से डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ रेस्पिरेटरी डिसऑर्डर को डिफ्रेंशिएट करते हैं इज दिस क्लियर विद एवरी वन डू रिप्लाई फास्ट किस तरह से हम डिफ्रेंशिएट करते हैं कि इट इज सी ओ पी डी और आवर रेस्पिटिव लंग डिजॉर्डर ठीक है किस तरह से हम डिफ्रेंशिएट करते हैं डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन को एवरी वन इज दिस क्लियर डू रिप्लाई फास्ट इज दिस क्लियर बिकॉज आई गेस इसके बाद क्वेश्चन पार्ट स्टार्ट होगा तो अभी तक सेशन में किसी को कोई डाउट है तो क्लियर कर सकते हैं एनी बडी एनी क्यूरी चिल नाउ यू कैन आस्क इन देशन ओनली सो मूविंग फर्दर टू द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन ऑफ टूडे सेशन द सफेक्शन प्रोडक्शन इन लंग स्टार्ट एट ट्वेंटी एट वीक थर्टी टू वीक थर्टी फोर वीक और थर्टी सिक्स वीक Perfect in production and lung it starts at Everybody answer this question. Perfect in production and lung starts at. It starts from 28th week. Answer is A. Coming to the next one. Perfect in is produced by type 2 pneumocyte, type 1 pneumocyte, macrophages, or the endothelial cell. Perfect in is produced by. Everybody answer this question. Easy, I guess. Everybody answer this question. Yeah, way two it is produced by type A two pneumocytes. Coming to the next one, surfactant is made up of or in human body the action of surfactant is done by fibrin, mucoprotein, phospholipid and protein or the fibrinogen. Surfactant is made up of.
surfactant is made up of Is it I guess it is made up of phosphoprotein, phospholipid and the protein. Coming to the next, the main part of surfactant is formed by dipalmitidol phosphatidyl quality choline, phosphatidyl inositol, dipalmitidol cephaline, dipalmitidol serine. The main part of surfactant is formed by. The main part of surfactant is formed by the main part of uh, surfactant is formed by our dipalmitidol phosphatidyl choline. Next is option A. So, pulmonary surfactant is secreted from the six week of gestation and maintain minimal alveolar integrity in hyaluronic membrane disease deficiency occur. Therapeutic application is seen. Evident secretion in bronchial alveolar carcinoma. It is a mucin and it is secreted by type 1 mucocyte. Which of the statements are correct? Pulmonary surfactant regarding which of the following statements are correct? Everybody answer this question. To reply first, which of the following statements are true regarding pulmonary surfactant? It is secreted by 26 week of gestation and it maintains minimum alveolar integrity. In highly membrane disease deficiency occur and therapeutic application is also seen because we already studied drug form of our surfactant. Synactin and baractin is used in deficiency of the surfactant. So next question, stability of alveoli is maintained by lung compliance, negative intraoperative pressure, increase in alveolar surface by the surfactant, residual AO in the alveoli. Stability of alveoli is maintained by Everybody answer this question.
stability of alveoli is maintained by not compliance compliance is the stretching ability of alveoli alveoli ki tendency kya hoti hai to collapse due to the surface tension exerted by water particles and yahi surface tension ko mar reduce karta hai surfactant by increasing the alveolar surface so answer is c is this clear dr bharve answer is not a it is c coming to the next one correct about action of surfactant it bind with the oxygen lubricate carbon dioxide flow make capillary surface hydrophilic break structure of water in the alveoli correct statement about the action of surfactant is everybody answer this question hello dr varsha good evening एलवेलाइट and what does the surfactant do suppose this is our alveoli this is lined by water molecule this surfactant break this water structure so theek hai and so the surface tension caused by the water molecule decreases and that's why it prevent the collapse of alveoli so it break the structure of water in the alveoli it increases the surface area of alveoli is this clear everybody moving further to the next question alveolar alveoli are kept dry because of surfactant glycoprotein buffer or the bose effect so answer this question i guess ab to samajh mein aa gaya hoga alveoli are हेलो डॉक्टर वर्षा दिस इज फॉर द नीट पीजी अगर आप नीट पीजी के लिए बायोलॉजी क्लास देखना चाहते हो यू कैन फॉलो द लेट्स क्रैक नीट यूजी ठीक है वहां पे जाके आप फॉलो कर लीजिए चेक करना पड़ेगा आपको थोड़ा सा वॉक करना होगा आपको खुद से एलवेलाई आर कैप ड्राइव बिकॉज ऑफ एवरीबडी आंसर दिस क्वेश्चन do reply fast everybody alveoli are kept dry because of obviously surfactant surfactant kya kar raha hai hamara water structure ko break kar raha hai and it is keeping our alveoli dry next question Hyaline membrane consists of albumin, fibrin, globulin, WBC. Most welcome, Varsha. Hyaline membrane contents. Everybody answer this question. Hyaline membrane contents.
Hyaline membrane consists of this fibrine, fibrinogen, and the adipose folder. Coming to the next one. True about inspiration, intrapleural pressure become more negative, more positive, same, initially positive, then negative, or no relation is there. Everybody answer this question. And to about inspiration, the intrapleural pressure becomes Everybody answer this question through about inspiration, the intrapleural pressure becomes at the resting condition minus 2.5 of the inspiration ki baad volume increase hoga, pressure is going to decrease, so it become more negative. Answer was A. Coming to the next one, the intrapleural pressure is negative both during inspiration and expiration because option A intrapleural Pulmonary pressure is always negative. Thoracic cage and lung are elastic in nature. Transpulmonary pressure determine the negativity. Surfect and prevent the collapse of lung. The intrapleural pressure is negative both during inspiration and expiration. Why is it so? Intrapleural pressure is negative both during inspiration and expiration. Why is it so? Lung ki tendency is to collapse, thoracic wall ki tendency is to expand. So that's why two opposing force are there and that is related to a negative intrapleural pressure. So answer is key. Thoracic cage and lung are elastic in nature and force acting on both of them are opposite in direction. That's why intrapleural pressure is negative. Coming to the next one, same question as skip karte. Next, in negative intrapleural pressure is due to Uniform distribution of surfactant over the alveoli, negative intraalveolar pressure, absorption of lymphatic and presence of cartilage in the upper airway. Shall everybody answer this question? Negative intraalveolar pressure is due to Negative intrapleural pressure is due to
इट इज ड्यू टू एब्जॉर्बन ऑफ लिम्पैटिक इट इज ड्यू टू हमारा अपोजिंग फोर्स एंड दिस वैक्यूम लाइक स्टेट इज मेंटेन बाय एब्जॉर्बन ऑफ लिम्पैटिक सो वी कैन से दिस एब्जॉर्बन ऑफ लिम्पैटिक इज ऑल्सो रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर नेगेटिव इंट्राप्यूरल प्रेशर कमिंग टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन ट्रू अबाउट नॉर्मल एक्सपिरेशन एट द एंड ऑफ नॉर्मल एक्सपिरेशन इन एयर इन लंग इज एक्सपायर टू रिजर्व वॉल्यूम chest wall has tendency to move outward which is balanced by inward recoil of alveolar in expiration pleural pressure is equal to alveolar pressure muscles that elevate the chest case are classified as muscles of expiration so everybody answer this question to about normal expiration do reply fast नॉर्मल इंस्पिरेशन इज इजी है नॉर्मल इंस्पिरेशन में क्या स्टेटमेंट ट्रू है चेस्ट वॉल हैज टेंडेंसी टू मूव आउटवर्ड व्हिच इज बैलेंस बाय इनवर्ड द रिकॉइल ऑफ अल्वेलर सो फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट क्या था एट द एंड ऑफ नॉर्मल एक्सपिरेशन वॉल्यूम एंड लंग इज आर एफ आर सी नॉट एक्सपायर टू इज द वॉल्यूम मूविंग एक्सपिरेशन में प्लूरल प्रेशर इज इक्वल टू अल्वेलर प्रेशर दैट इज रॉन्ग मसल दैट एलिवेट द चेस्ट क्लास केस इज डिफाइंड एज मसल ऑफ इंस्पिरेशन सो आंसर इज only and only b coming to the next question next question a person is having a normal lung compliance but there is an increased airway resistance the most economical way of breathing for him is rapid and deep rapid and shallow slow and deep slow and shallow acha question everybody answer this question Person is having a normal lung compliance. The best way, most economical way of breathing for him is. देखो उस सिचुएशन में क्या होगा? Airway resistance increase है तो slow and deep breathing is the most economical one. No, rapid and deep नहीं. It is slow and deep. Airway resistance increase है. Rapidly you breathe करेंगे तो उस में हमारा क्या होगा? Airway resistance की वजह से जो exaggeration है, that is going to increase when we have this rapid breathing. So situation है best way is slow and deep breathing. Coming to the next one, Ra difference in trajectory between inspiratory loop and expiratory loop in the curve is due to. This is the inspiratory loop. This is the expiratory loop. So option A, difference in alveolar pressure during inspiration and expiration. Option B, difference in concentration of surfactant during inspiration and expiration. Option C, difference in airway resistance during inspiration and expiration. Option D, inspiration is active, expiration is passive. Which of the following is going to explain this difference in trajectory? Everybody answer this question.
everybody answer this question difference in refractory between inspiratory loop and expiratory loop is due to because of concentration of surfactant very true hysteresis this hysteresis is due to difference in compliance during inspiration and expiration and that is due to this concentration of surfactant kya hota hai at the start of inspiration agar baat karenge to alveoli are small and smaller alveoli mein hamara jo surfactant distribute hoga then area small hai to concentration kya ho jayega more ho jayega surface tension reduce ho jayega and surface tension reduce ho jayega to compliance is more at the end of inspiration alveoli become larger larger area mein hamara surfactant distribute hoga concentration of surfactant is going to decrease so compliance is going to decrease क्योंकि सरफेस टेंशन क्या होगा ओवरऑल सरफेस टेंशन इज मोर एंड वी ऑल नो कंप्लायंस इज इन मोस्टली प्रोपोर्शनल टू द सरफेस टेंशन सरफेस टेंशन इज मोर सो कंप्लायंस इज लेस सो दैट्स व्हाई देयर इज अ कंप्लायंस चेंज ड्यूरिंग इंस्पिरेशन एंड एक्सपिरेशन बिकॉज़ एट द स्टार्ट ऑफ इंस्पिरेशन कंप्लायंस इज मोर एट द एंड ऑफ इंस्पिरेशन कंप्लायंस इज लेस व्हाइल एट द स्टार्ट ऑफ एक्सपिरेशन कंप्लायंस इज मोर लेस एंड एट द एंड ऑफ एक्सपिरेशन कंप्लायंस इज less and this all is due to the concentration of surfactant so answer is b only is this clear with everybody moving further the normal compliance of lung is 20 ml per cm of water 80 and 800 ml per cm of water 500 ml per cm of water or 1000 ml per cm of water compliance of lung is the normal compliance of lung is everybody answer this question normal compliance of lung is it is 200 ml per cm of water coming to the next one tidal volume is calculated as inspiratory capacity minus inspiratory reserve volume total lung capacity minus reserve volume residual volume capacity minus residue sorry frc minus residual volume vital capacity minus expiratory reserve volume which of the following statement is true tidal volume is calculated by everybody answer this question tidal volume is calculated by Tidal volume is calculated by Yeah, way true. Inspiratory capacity minus inspiratory reserve volume because inspiratory capacity is equal to inspiratory reserve volume plus tidal volume. So answer is A. Coming to the next one, 
volume of air that is taken in and taken out during normal respiration is referred as inspiratory reserve volume, tidal volume, expiratory reserve volume, or the vital capacity. Easy, I guess. Shall everybody answer this question? Volume of air that is taken in or given out during normal respiration is referred as Volume of air that is taken in or given out during normal respiration is referred as to reply fast everybody. Easy the I guess. Yeah, it is a tidal volume, not expiratory reserve volume. Expiratory reserve volume kya normal expiration ki baad jo hum deeply expire to sakte. That is expiratory reserve volume. Is this clear? So answer is only and only B. Coming to the next one. FRC is volume remaining after forced expiration. Tidal volume plus volume inspired forcefully. Volume remaining after normal expiration. Tidal volume plus volume expired by forced expiration is FRC. Which of the following is true? FRC is? FRC is option A volume remaining after force expiration. Option B tidal volume plus volume inspired forcefully. Option C volume remaining after normal expiration. Option E tidal volume plus volume expired by forceful expiration. FRC is Tidal volume plus volume inspired forcefully that is inspiratory reserve volume. So this is inspiratory reserve capacity not the FRC. FRC kya hota hai? FRC is our expiratory reserve volume plus our residual volume. So this is the volume that is remaining in our lung after normal expiration. So answer is C. Coming to the next one. FRC is defined as Volume expired after normal expiration. Volume remaining after post expiration. Expiratory reserve volume plus residual volume. Tidal volume plus volume inspired forcefully. Is it? Shall everybody answer this question? FRC of lung is defined as. FRC, we just discussed here the expiry reserve volume plus residual volumes. Answer is C. Coming to the next one. Total lung capacity depends upon size of airway, closing volume, lung compliance, or the residual volume. 
total lung capacity depends upon. Total lung capacity depends upon. Total lung capacity depends upon. Your way to depend upon lung compliance. Next question. Regarding pulmonary function test, all are true except total lung volume increases in emphysema, compliance decreases in interstitial lung disease, compliance is total lung distensibility, FEV1 is forced expiratory rate at one minute. Regarding pulmonary function test, all are true except Regarding pulmonary function tests, all are true except. Very true. I feel human is false expiratory rate in one second, not one minute. Next one. Which of the following is used to measure the resistance to small airway or best denote airway resistance? Option A, vital capacity. Option B, FEV1. Option C, maximum mid respiratory flow rate. Option D, closing volume. So everybody answer this question. Which of the following is used to measure or resistance or to small airway or best denote airway resistance? Everybody answer this question. Do remember, this is the maximum mid respiratory flow rate. Your way to Dr. Sweet, Dr. Shruchuna. Answer is C. Maximum mid respiratory flow rate denote bestly denote our airway resistance. Coming to the next one. Critical closing volume is option A, volume at the end of forceful expiration. Option B, volume at the end of forceful inspiration. Volume remaining after FRC is measured. Option D, close to residual volume. Critical closing volume is
critical closing volume is the volume remaining after FRC is measured. No, it's not to be. Volume at the end of forceful inspiration is our total lung capacity. Volume at the end of forceful expiration is our residual volume. After FRC, volume lung that is our critical closing volume. That is the volume that is entrapped by the basal region of alveoli at the end of expiration. So answer is C. Coming to the next one. Pulmonary function abnormalities in interstitial lung disease include all of the following except reduced vital capacity, reduced fan index, reduced diffusion capacity, reduced total lung capacity. Pulmonary functional abnormalities in interstitial lung disease include all of the following except Pulmonary functional abnormalities in interstitial lung disease include all of the following except. Everybody answer this question. They go, interstitial lung disease me kya hota hai? Compliance decreases, vital capacity decreases, diffusion capacity decreases, total lung capacity decreases. But the Tiffany index increases or remain normal. So answer is B. Coming to the next one, which set of data correctly define restrictive lung disorder? FRC increases, compliance increases, FEV1 upon force vital capacity ratio increases, compliance decreases, FEV1 upon force vital capacity ratio decreases, compliance decreases, option D, total lung capacity increases, the residual volume decreases. Which set of data correctly define a restrictive lung disorder? Everybody answer this question. Which set of data correctly define the restrictive lung disorder? Tiffany index increases and our compliance decreases. So answer is B. Coming to the next one. In upper airway obstruction, all of the following are seen except decrease maximal breathing capacity, residual volume decreases, decrease FEV, decrease weighted capacity. In upper airway obstruction, all of the following are seen except everybody answer this question.
Everybody answer this question. In upper airway obstruction, all are seen except residual volume decreases. No, residual volume not decreases in this situation. So, answer is B. Coming to the next, pulmonary function changes seen in emphysema are total lung capacity increases, residual volume decreases, FEV1 increases, vital capacity increases. Pulmonary function changes seen in emphysema are Pulmonary function changes seen in emphysema are In emphysema, total lung capacity increases, FEV1 increases, vital capacity increases. So, answer is A, C, D. Coming to the next one. In a body plethysmography, a person is asked to expire against a closed glottis. What will be the changes in the pressure at the level of lung and the box? Increases in both, decreases in both, increases in lung, decreases in box, decreases in lung, increases in box. Everybody answer this question. Body plethysmography when person is asked to expire, the volume in the lung is going to decrease. So pressure at the level of lung is going to increase. Box me kya volume is going to increase. So pressure at the level of box is going to decrease. So answer is C. Is this clear? Coming to the next question, vital capacity is summation of inspiratory reserve volume, tidal volume plus expiratory reserve volume. Vital capacity is tidal volume plus inspiratory reserve volume plus residual volume. Expiratory reserve volume, inspiratory reserve volume plus residual volume. Residual volume, inspiratory volume, expiratory volume. Vital capacity is a summation of. Everybody answer this question. Vital capacity is a summation of vital capacity doesn't include the residual volume. So all are 
all are wrong only and only answer is false inspired to reserve volume plus tidal volume plus expired to reserve volume it is going to see this vital capacity very true coming to the next spirometry measures tidal volume tidal alarm capacity expired to reserve volume frc inspired to reserve volume which volume and capacity we can measure it from the spirometry multiple answers so everybody answer the question correctly Spirometry measures. कौन कौन से volume और capacity we can measure from the spirometry? Anybody? We can measure the tidal volume. We can measure this expiratory reserve volume. We can measure this inspiratory reserve volume. We cannot measure the total lung capacity. We cannot measure the FRC. Answer is only and only A, C, and E. Coming to the next, spirometry can measure all of the following except tidal volume. residual volume vital capacity or inspiratory reserve capacity spirometry can demonstrate and measure all of the following except everybody answer this question spirometry can demonstrate and measure all of the following except Spirometry can demonstrate. Yeah, way through. It cannot measure the residual volume. Answer is B. Way through. Coming to the next one. Nitrogen washout method is used for estimating dead space volume, FRC, tidal volume, or diffusion capacity. Nitrogen washout method is used for estimating. nitrogen washout method is used to measure our frc dead space no dead space ke liye volume ke liye we use single nitrogen breath method not washout method do not confuse with this one answer is frc is this clear coming to the next one this given graph likely depict which of the following this is this graph bronchial asthma emphysema interstitial lung disease or the normal study this graph likely depict which of the following disorder 
everybody answer this question First of all, the graph what is showing it is showing for given change in a pressure, the volume changes very low. See, the pressure change is very low, and volume changes low. So, how is curve? Ho gaya? Low compliance curve ho gaya and low compliance is seen in. Low compliance is seen in. Anybody? It is seen in interstitial lung disorder, not in emphysema. Emphysema may compliance increase with that. So answer is C. Is this clear, everybody? Do you reply first? Is this clear? To reply fast, everybody moving further to the next question. Okay, that was the last question of today's session. Ask the session me kisi ko bhi koi doubt hai to clear kar sakte. Anybody, any query till now you can ask in the session only. Kisi ko bhi koi doubt. The given graph likely depicts which of the following? So much may I have questions, Hare? Chalo. Hope you all like the session. If you like the session, do share. This is important. Jitna zada share karo ge, class interactive hoti hai. So do share everybody. And channel ko subscribe kar li jiye. Our channel is Let's Crack Neat ki ji. And press the bell icon so that you will get notification. Okay, next time sir, Vinita, we can change the time up. Do remind me in the next session. Next session may say change calling it. Subscribe to our channel cool. That is let's crack neat PG and press the bell icon so that you will get notification of every classes from the YouTube only. Okay, this is the page on Telegram. Telegram pay which follow classes link mil jate. 
चलो रेगुलर मेहनत करते रहिए यू विल डेफिनेटली एबल टू अचीव योर टारगेट यू विल डेफिनेटली क्रैक योर एग्जाम विद गुड रैंक्स चलो दैट्स ऑल फॉर टुडे थैंक यू सो मच एवरीबॉडी फॉर जॉइनिंग दिस इज द कोड डॉक्टर निधि इफ यू वांट टू जॉइन एनी पेड कोर्स यू कैन यूज दिस रेफरल कोड टू गेट एडिशनल 10% ऑफ ठीक है डू रिमेंबर दिस कोड If you have any query, you can post me on an academy. My page on an academy is anacademy. dot com slash at the rate kgs. Follow me out there also, so that you will get notification of every classes from the app also. अगर कोई भी paid class हो या special class हो, आपको notification मिल जाएगा. Most welcome everybody. और कोई भी query हो, तो वहाँ जाके आप message drop कर सकते हो. My page on an academy is anacademy. dot com slash at the rate kgs. ठीक है. That's all for today. Thank you so much everybody for joining. See you in the next session. Bye bye everyone.